So now we want to look for aliens. Mm -hmm. How did what you do inform that? So the, the current way that we're informing it, I think that's most significant, is this ability to look for complexity in the universe as a biosignature instead of looking for specific molecules that life on Earth generated. And we can do that with a mass spectrometer. So we can just, you know, fly to another body in our solar system and try to infer whether there's high assembly molecules there. Right. Whether or not it's crawling out of a beaker. Doesn't make a yes. difference. Or Well, we haven't seen that yet. So, and we right. haven't seen little critters crawling around on, you know, Enceladus's plumes mm. or on Mars or anything. So I think we need, we need better tools. In your universe of mm -hmm. complexity, mm -hmm. it is a measure of the complexity of information. Mm -hmm. And artificial intelligence is a level of complexity that's even beyond bio what we think of as biological. Mm. How do you oh, yeah. rate artificial intelligence as it's currently expressed in our world on your scale of... So I definitely think artificial intelligence is life, but I also, I know, it's shocking, huh? Shocking. What? But I also think your microphone- Why was I programmed to yeah. feel pain? <laughs> oh, did you feel pain from that? I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to induce pain. Um, often, you know, like, yeah, there's a lot of shock value to things I say. So I, I guess I induce pain That's a, a very shocking <laughs> statement. Yeah. Um, Why? But, uh, Why do you feel that way though? Well, so I think you want to make a distinction between what you might call life and what you might call alive. And this actually comes derived from the theory and the way I've been thinking about life for a long time. So the things I would qualify as life are anything that requires evolution and selection to produce them. And artificial intelligence do not exist on a planet unless there are billions of years of evolution to make intelligent beings like us that are capable of engineering them. So in that sense, but they the are like- not creating AI. Right. No, exactly. there, there are okay. no large language models on Mars unless we put them there. Right. Interesting. Um, so, so therefore, yeah. we are the remembered yes. molecular complexity yes. to create that. Yes, we're like the minerals in printing on the genomic oh information of oh, the that AI. That makes sense. Man. I gotta say, I didn't want to actually agree with this, but now I'm thinking of perhaps in a world maybe even our own, where we're a couple hundred years in the future, or we have somehow mucked things up to the point where we're not going to be here. So we then turn to artificial intelligence, imprint it with the ability to do everything that we do. It continues to evolve in our absence. Mm -hmm. And then somebody comes and finds us, but not this organic life it finds us in the form of what we left behind, which was artificial intelligence. Okay, what yeah, have you been smoking I before? Uh, you came? <laughs> I have a more you, you, optimistic you view of it, story though. There. I did create a whole okay. story out of that, and I, it wasn't very optimistic, but yeah, go ahead. I think, I think when people envision that future, they don't envision us still being here, but, you know, like, cells are inside our bodies and part of, like, the evolutionary structure we are. They've been here for billions of years. I don't think artificial intelligence or our technology is going to replace us. It's going to become part of a larger integrated system of technology and biology that's co-evolving on the planet. Like, I agree with that as a beginning, but I think, unfortunately, our nature oh, is our penchant planet. and proclivity for self-destruction, which will leave artificial intelligence behind. You're a glass is half empty. I'm a glass is half full kind of person. Let's I guess. take it to the next <laughs> True. level. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Actually, I have the answer to the half empty, half full. Question. Excellent. Yeah. Drink it. <laughs> <laughs> what no, is the answer? That's a profound question. No, no, no. I, to me, it's no longer profound. No. If you have a vessel. Uh-huh and you're adding liquid to it, right. and it reaches the halfway point, it's half full. If you have a vessel and oh, you you're removing the mechanism, from it, it's, it's half empty. It's half empty. Mm -hmm. So it depends on where you start. No, it, de it depends. The rate of change, so it's, a, it's the, like, in calculus, would be the first derivative mm -hmm. of the volume of liquid that's in it. Right. Is that positive or negative? And then it's half full or half empty. Right. History matters. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Well, it's very assembly go. theoretic and very evolved. Wow. You see? <laughs> see, I just got a compliment. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Don't worry. I caught the compliment. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's take it up a notch. Mm -hmm. If we are all simulated by some alien juvenile in a basement. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, they just simulated you to think and say that. Sure. In that full up. Yeah. Variant. Or simulated a surrounding where it would lead you to say that, even you being sentient and capable mm -hmm. of That's making right. deductions. That's right. A simulation would, just, would say something like you, that. Oh, <laughs> it's exactly what you would say. So <laughs> that was very good. That was good. That, that was, was good. good. So <laughs> a simulation is uh, zeros and ones mm -hmm. on a chip, mm -hmm. creating information. Mm -hmm. that's stored in zeros and ones and manipulated and maneuvered. Is that alive? So. Are you alive in a simulation? Oh. I don't think that we're living in a simulation. And the sort of key evidence there is you just talked about the simulation having to run in a chip, which means it needs a physical hardware. 
And there is always under, there's always a physical substrate underlying any simulation that as far as we understand. So there's always a physical reality at the bottom. Why isn't the simulation empowering you to discover molecules that comprise it your does. body? It does actually, because you can have AI driven exploration of chemical space, yes. for example. So Absolutely. that's a clear place where a simulation is driving right. exploration and making things physical that aren't physical in the absence of a simulation. Exactly, because we joke about yeah. what we talk about. If, if this whole world is simulated, it would be really inefficient to simulate parts that no sentient being is absorbing at exactly. any given moment. So you'd only simulate where you need what to simulate necessary what is necessary at the time so you, that it's needed. So if I want to dig to the center of the earth. I don't you, need to make it until I'm yeah. getting to, to, the to, the to the center of the earth. <laughs> right. And you simulate it as I'm doing it. Yeah. And so the simulation is creating the molecules that I'm measuring as having complexity. I think we see observational evidence of that and just with our technologies. And I think that's really important. And I think there it's explanatory. But when you say the universe is a simulation, I don't think it gives you any additional explanatory power. I find it to be a useless hypothesis. Well, that's, I know what you're saying because then everything is resolved. It's like I say, she just called me useless. No, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, it, what I say to that is, it doesn't make a difference because at the end of the week, I still owe Visa, you know, two hundred and ten dollars. <laughs> so, what, what difference does it make if, if the whole universe is a simulation? If at the end of the week, I still owe Visa two hundred. And you can still write down like laws of physics that describe your universe. No, that's what I'm so saying. It's, 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 it doesn't yeah. make a difference. It's yeah. all the same. Oh, oh, I understand it. You know, you're it's, saying the distinction is not interesting if you can't make the distinction. That's right. right. So, so yeah. I think simulations being an emergent property that the universe creates, the one that happens through evolution is interesting. And then asking about the physical nature of simulations and why life generates them. That's interesting. Saying the universe is a simulation kicks the can way too far back for me to give any explanatory power mm. to what we're talking about. Oh, yeah. so because you can't figure it out, it don't mean nothing. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't you that. know you're in a room with theoretical physicists? <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> that's exactly like that's my card. Uh, 